Good day YouTube, today we're gonna be a React Andy. Pestily made an interesting video about uh, PvE killing Tarkov and uh, recently I tried PvE out. Generally I wasn't really um, excited about playing it, I wasn't really, I don't know. I am a PvP Andy, I love those fights, I love the adrenaline rush when you're fighting legit players. But recently I've tried PvE and uh, surprisingly it was way more fun than I expected. So let's watch Pastel's video and I'll share my thoughts on the future of Tarkov and uh, how Hi, PvE is... and how PvE will change it. Hi guys, this is Pastel and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. Today I'm talking about the PvE mode for Escape from Tarkov. Has it killed Tarkov? What is it? And everything in between. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So first up, PvE mode is a pretty much a full standalone playthrough of Escape from Tarkov where you don't play against other players. It is AI that are the PMCs within the raid and you can play the game just like normal. However, instead of running into other like real humans, you're running into bots that are pretending to be the humans. So you can actually still get the same fix of Escape from Tarkov without some of the other concerns and issues with Escape from Tarkov. So for example, you are locally hosted. So you can actually load into a raid extremely fast. This does put a lot of strain and you know pressure on your PC and therefore it can actually make you have a slower frame rate. Now they have tried to combat this a little bit by having making it that Streets of Tarkov is also ran on the Battlestack game servers. And also you have the ability to scavenge, which is also hosted on the Tarkov VSG servers. Besides from that, you can play through the actual entire game and it will not wipe unless you want it to. So regarding the FPS issue, it is true. Your FPS are actually worse in PvE mode when you play on your own PC, when the game is hosted on your own PC. Um, and it's simply to do with the fact that some of the operations that were initially run by BGG servers are now relocated onto your own PC because the server is hosted locally and your PC has to deal with this and that's where you get better, sorry, well, that's where you get worse frames. Um, I could see a huge difference on interchange. I would typically get around 80 FPS inside the mall while when I play online I would get roughly 150, 160-ish. So that's a big difference, yeah, and I hope BSG are working to fix this. I've read somewhere that, I think I think Nikita did mention that they will make FPS better in PvE mode uh, when you run it local in your PC. And secondly, I've read somewhere that I think somebody who created um, AI for the SPT, SPT is a single player Tarkov mode, like the illegal copy of Tarkov, and the guy somehow managed to utilize the multi-threading of CPUs for AI. And uh, if BSG can have a look at this mod whenever it get, gets released and implement something similar in uh, PvE, unless they already implemented multi-threading for AI, that will generally boost the FPS as well. So therefore, if you're a father of 7,000 kids and you want to play the game at your own pace, you can. And it's been very attractive for a lot of people. This is not the offline co-op mode that was purchasable for like 5 or $10 that was available for a long time, where if you had Edge of Darkness, you could play the game with other people with Edge of Darkness in an offline co-op realm, where you can set the settings to whatever you want and just test out stuff or set your own little competitions. This is not that mode. This is a separate mode where you actually progress in Escape from Tarkov. Now, how much is it? It's actually only $20 to purchase if you already have Escape from Tarkov. Now, if you don't have Escape from Tarkov, you will need to buy the game and then buy this on top. But it is a standalone way of playing the game without any of those other stresses we just spoke about previously. Now, Escape from Tarkov has gone through its fair bit of drama over the last few months where they released the Unheard Edition, and that was where we first saw the first iteration of the PvE, and it was only available to people that had the Unheard Edition. Then after that, BSG took their time, but eventually they agreed on the fact that EOD, or the Edge of Darkness Editions, would get this for free, and then it took them a few months to get to the point where they will... You know, while, while watching this and thinking about, like, taking us back in time when PvE just released and it was always played online, I think BSG could give us an option to either play offline on hosting the game on our local PCs or give us an option to play online on their servers. So if you don't have really a if you don't have a beefy PC and you really want those additional frames, uh whenever you launch the game or whenever you're in PvE mode, you should be able to tick that like yo, I am ready to wait for a couple of minutes to load into the raid as long as it's hosted on BSG servers and I get better FPS. I think this is a uh, solution as well if you're willing to wait for a minute or two minutes to find the match i mean why not made it so you could buy the pv upgrade for 20 dollars to be able to play it with everyone else now what i mean with everyone else that means you can actually go in a raid with other people that have pve and play together against the bots if you do this you will be playing on the bhg servers and you get to progress together at whatever rate you want so it is a very appealing thing but it's brought up its own controversies so recently i posted this poll and the reason why i posted this poll was a lot of people had actually started playing pve and i was kind of curious how many people were actually playing it as their primary game now it's no secret there was a lot of drama and a lot of people either quit a scaffold tarkov wrote it off and said they're never going to play it again or some people 
people just like to click a poll where they say, oh, I just want to see the result. So that's why I always try and give an option for, you know, quit or don't have the game. So that's there. So you completely ignore these people of the uh, 34,000 votes. You could say probably about 12,000 of those aren't even part of this or maybe even 14,000, which means about 10 to 11,000 people are currently playing PvE as their primary game mode and 10,000 ish, 10 to 11,000 ish are playing the PvP mode, which begs the question, how quiet are the servers on the PvP mode? Now, depending on what time of day and the realms and regions you play on, PvP mode can be quite quiet to the point where you won't even see other players at times. But obviously, if you're playing on a weekend, peak hour, you know, on a busy server, it's going to be chock a block. But a lot of people have found a lot of fun and interest in the PvE mode. Now, there's always a lot of uh, conversation either on Reddit or Twitter and Twitch streams and everything where people are all like, oh, you know, PvE killed Tarkov or, you know, cheaters have killed Tarkov. And honestly, I haven't even done a state of Tarkov video, which is something I usually do every, like, feels like every year I'm pretty much writing or maybe every six months I'm making a, a state of Tarkov video. Uh, but this one came out recently where pretty much someone was saying that PvE killed Tarkov. Now, you have to understand the white cycles of escape for Tarkov before we get into this situation because this is nearly definitely going to be the longest white wipe in Escape from Tarkov's history. It's going to be, I think, around the eight-month mark, which is a very long time for Escape from Tarkov to go without a wipe. But the question comes up that PvE killed Tarkov because no one wants to play the main game. No one wants to play PvP at the moment because they're bored and they need something to do. And PvE is exciting and fun to play for the very first time. Or if you're new to Tarkov, it's actually really cool. And I will talk about that a little bit more further. So my thoughts for there are... So he talks about the Tarkov cycles. Like, whenever the game wipes, it gets a lot of hype. Everybody is um, really excited to try out the new content. But right now, if you have PvE, PvE doesn't get wiped on the wipe date, but you still get the new content. So if you think about this, on the day one of the wipe, you will still have max out traders in your PvE if you already level them up. You get access to the new content instantly. You can try out the new guns, the new maps, uh, the new features. You can probably get access to the new quests that unlock new items. And generally, it will not take you too much to go through all the new content. And if people don't enjoy playing the usual PvP mode because of cheaters or because whatever other reasons, they'll just hop into PvE, play for a couple of weeks, a month, try everything out, and uh, if they're not interested in Tarkov, they'll play something else. While before, everybody was forced to play PvP. So on the day of the wipe, you'll get into PvP mode, you will slowly level up, you will slowly unlock new guns, you will slowly get access to the new quests. And I think that kind of prolonged uh, the wipe because you wouldn't really try all the new content on day one. It will take you a while to level up, to uh, get access to the new quests, etc., 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 etc. So I think it took roughly three months for players to, for the average players to reach max out traders and to try all the new things out. And that's when the wipe slowly started dying and people would leave the game and wait till the next wipe or to some events or till updates. So my fear, if you can put it this way, is that in the next wipe, people will literally go straight to PvE, try out the new stuff, and uh, PvP will feel dead way earlier than four or five months in the wipe. I think it's going to be two, two and a half. So how is it going to unfold? I don't know, but here are my thoughts in this video. But uh, Gigi did actually respond saying PvE didn't kill Tarkov, cheaters killed the play base into PvP. Now that's very true. A lot of people were playing PvE for different reasons. One would say cheaters, they don't all raid, they uh, they constantly get smacked by a cheater or they feel like they're dying to a cheater every raid. If you are in the mindset that you are dying to a cheater every single raid, you're probably not very good at the game, right? There are cheaters, I'm going to be very clear. But if you're thinking it's every single raid that you die, I'm going to say you're probably not dying to cheaters every raid. There are definitely cheaters though. And that actually has made a lot of people feel the pain because the one thing about Escape for Tarkov, when you die to a cheater, it's like getting kicked in the balls, but you're also losing your progression. You're losing your time spent playing the game it's a cod yeah yeah like <laughs> speaking of losing the time playing the game there is actually an in-game compensation for if you report the cheaters uh i think the system needs to be updated you should get compensated if you die to a cheater if you even if you didn't report the cheater otherwise it doesn't make sense and you should just report every single death in the game because there is a small chance that guy was a cheater even if he wasn't sus he'll get banned you'll get compensation uh but that's I talk for another day but yeah um so i was playing labs recently and um i died to a flying cheater which happens occasionally i don't really see flying cheaters very often maybe like i don't know once every few weeks once a month um and i lost roughly 1.5 million rubles in gear the labs access card is like what 300k and then i had like a really good gun armor and a um good helmet etc etc and the compensation system give me back 30,000 rubles it didn't even pay, like, I brought I brought three nades into the game. The nades are like 20k each. I didn't even get the money back for my nades. Like, those 30,000 rubles, they don't even pay for one mag um, worth of bullets. 
I was using a M62, I believe. I had 30 rounders for my MDR. And just the bullets for one 30 rounder costs more than 30k. So I think that needs to be buffed up. And since there is already a system in the game that calculates how much gear you're bringing into the raid, because when you ensure your gear, it takes your gear, it multiplies it by some value, and it gives you how much you have to pay for insurance. So the game basically knows how much uh, how much gear you have on yourself. So I think it would be fair whenever you go into the raid, the game calculates the price of your gear, and if you die to a cheater, it just gives you that gear back in rubles. So you can basically buy exactly the same gear set that you've lost to a cheater. I think that would be fair. I don't, have, I don't really see any issues. Like people can say that, oh, like you can dupe it like if you go into the raid with the same cheater and he keeps on killing you. All right, easy fix. Um, if you die to the same cheater once, twice or three times, you just get one of your gear sets back, the most expensive one. That's it, solves the problem. It's not like you're gonna die to the same cheater very often either way. Lobby or Apex Legends, you press press Q again, you're in, you're having fun, nothing really changed that much. You just got a little bit of an ego kick. You know, whereas in Escape of Tarkov, you might have lost like a item that you were finding or looking for for weeks. You know, these things can actually be really detrimental to your progression when you die to a cheater, so it is very punishing. And in PvE mode, you don't have to worry about that. So you will not have to run into cheaters. Secondly, the probably the other thing that is really, really cool about PvE, it queues in instantly. There's no matching times. Unless you're playing on streets or with other people, you're not relying on BSG servers at all. I can Yeah, matching is really quick. It takes like 20 seconds to get into the raid. I don't even have t enough time to like go grab some water or take a piss while I'm <laughs> loading into my PvP raids. Sometimes get into a raid within 15 to 20 seconds pressing ready. And I'm not just talking factory, I'm talking other maps. Like you're going into customs and within 15 to 20 seconds press ready, bam, you're already deploying. And it's just really cool to like not have to be sitting around for seven minutes of matching to some random person that's synchronizing with the servers. And it's very frustrating when that happens. So to be honest, that is another reason why I think a lot of people are playing PvE. The last but not least reason is this this whole theory that the Giga Chads of Tarkov have, you know, suppressed the pleb into not being able to have any fun playing Escape for Tarkov and the emergence too much and they want to go into the PvE lobbies because they're sick of getting stomped on by 17 year old kids that don't even go to school and all they're doing is playing Tarkov 24-7 I think it's actually completely opposite now it's not the Giga Chess that are suppressing the PvP population it's more to do with the fact that a lot of people are playing slower and uh, camping either bushes or exits because if you think from that standpoint if you're an average player and there is a giga chat just w keying jumping shooting non-stop spamming voice lines it's much easier to kill them than killing somebody who's camping the exit or just sitting in the bush for the whole raid so i'm not sure if i agree with this one i think it's completely opposite Twitch streamers, which I'm gonna be honest, I think out of the whole player base, the, the Twitch streamers are probably a very small percentage. But yeah, I, I imagine there would be some people that are just getting sick of getting stomped on by actual good players. But at the same time, that's a part of Tarkov. Like you all go through that as you progress. So they're probably not the kind of people who are gonna stick through Tarkov anyway. And they're probably gonna get agitated and frustrated at other things. But I would say third but final reason, but not really the most compelling is uh, the people that are getting sick and getting stomped on. And they want the easy mode, which PVE mode is fairly easy, but it is fun. So let's go with that. All right, so let's talk about my experience on PVE. So first up, um, I'm doing two playthroughs at the exact same time. One is a single raid a day. I go in, I play one raid of Escape from Tarkov, one PvE mode, and I try and do as much as I can in that raid. Depending on the map, say a streets raid is like 50 minutes. I try and get as much done with kills and looting and everything. And then other times I'll go into like customs. It's like 35, 40 minutes and I try and get as much done. It's been a lot of fun. I do one raid a day. That's kind of how I'm doing it so I don't get sick of it. Doing that playthrough is actually really fun to just be able to try out PvE without going too obsessed with it. Because I feel like if I played it all day, every day, I would get very bored of it because it is kind of repetitive and easy. Um, but for people learning Escape from Tarkov, I think they'll actually benefit a lot from that. Because instead of just trying to get into a raid and go, going, oh, I'm dead. They actually get to explore and try out like, whoa, what's in this area and, and actually loot around. So I got my. So speaking of PVE getting boring, I'm not sure if Pestily talks about it in the future, but BG said that there will be a mod support in the future for PVE mode. And I really think this will be the future of Tarkov if BG do it correctly. Um, I haven't, I don't have much experience with DayZ, but as far as I know, there is a bunch of different mods you can install and the servers you play on. I really hope that Tarkov gets something like that in the future, so you can select um, the server you want to play on. You see what kind of mods that server has, the private server, um, and you connect to the server, you download the mods while connecting, and you play on the server. You can see the wipe date, so you know if the server is wiping like a month uh away or two months away so you can play on uh, on this server if you want or if there is another server that is wiping literally tomorrow so you hop on the new server that is wiping tomorrow you enjoy all the early um, early stages of the wipe that you enjoy maybe there are some additional hardcore modes maybe there is like some weather changes that you enjoy and basically there will be um yeah i think it's going to be fun for for everyone so if we do manage to get a proper mod support for pve um it'd be great yeah
my one rate a day series. And then I'm also starting, uh, which I'm restarting because I actually can now do it on a standard account. I'm restarting my PVE playthrough or hardcore. So this one will be done over a long period of time, but I did start it on an unheard edition and it was definitely easy uh, for hardcore. I was getting like a lot of PMC kills per raid, uh, which made it a lot easier because I could actually constantly stay really decked out with good gear. But for the main reasons I was talking about before, there's no cheaters, there's no uh, loading times. It is cool and fun just to go in there, mess about and have a bit of fun. That is my experience with PVE. I'm sure a lot of other people are experiencing different things. And of course you actually can play this with your friends as well. So um, now that it's actually available to purchase for 20 bucks, it might actually bring a lot of people, I actually do think it'll bring a lot of people back to Escape from Tarkov and being able to play the game again because they might've had a bit of annoyance in the cheaters or loading times and, and all that kind of stuff. And very briefly, I will touch on, should you buy it? Um, yes, if you are the kind of person that just wants to play Tarkov at your own pace, I think $20 is really reasonable. It's not like a, a heap of money. If you are pissed off at Battlestate games and you ever want to touch their game again, totally understand. There are a lot of people out there that will say, why don't you just play SPT, which is a single player Tarkov. It's a cracked version of Escape from Tarkov. Some people are saying that you do need the game. Other people are saying you don't need the game to do it. It's modifiable, all these things. Be cheap. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to show, Pestle, if you want to make people interested in um to do it. It's modifiable, all these things in PvE. I mean, yeah, it looks sick, but I mean, yeah, if you want to install a PvE, it's probably better than sorry, if you want to install SPT, it's probably better than PvE because of how many mods it has and apparently it runs better. Uh but I think a lot of people won't be bothered installing SPT, like you have to manually install it, you have to manually download the mods. Uh, do something with the in-game folders and if people can't be asked, yeah, I think PvE is worth it. I generally believe it is worth $20, yeah. Things. BHG are going to make PvE mode modifiable in the future. I don't really care what you do. It's up to you how you want to go. But I think 20 bucks to support PvE is worthwhile. And if you want to play it, do it. If not, I don't really care. I do find it fun and a good way to teach people Escape from Tarkov. Now, before I do wrap up this video, I am actually starting to make content again for my Pestily TV channel. Originally, this channel was made for all the long format content because it was so long and I was putting out so many videos a day. I'm now putting out all my long format content there so you can find it and I can make more opinion pieces and specific videos for the Pestily channel so it's not getting lost in episode 74 of the Hardcore series. I do understand there's a lot of members on this channel i am going to make it like a dollar or dollar 50 or something on the pesley tv channel for you to be a member over there and you'll get early access to all the videos that come out on that channel so as soon as they're ready to post and scheduled you'll be able to get access to the series being over there so at the moment there's going to be a seven days to die series on the pesley tv channel starting i think today on the first of august will be the offline pve raid one raid a day series which i'm actually really excited for you guys to see because there's been some pretty cool moments in that one and then the hardcore series will go up there once the wipe happens in early august so you'll have three series going at the same time which good luck my editor because he's got to do all that puzzle stuff for this channel as well hopefully we can keep it up it's going to be an interesting one, but we're going to... <laughs> Good thing I don't have an editor and do everything myself. Give it a go. So if you haven't gone and checked out no the Pestle TV channel, go out. over there, give it a sub, get ready for a lot of content going out there because it's going to be, it'll be up on the Pestle or play PvE mode and uh, also subscribe. Notice yeah, that's about it. So give this video a thumbs up, show your thoughts down in the comments below and um, I'll see you in the next one.